Praise God. You glad to be in God's house tonight, amen? Amen. I'm glad to be here, amen. I hope and pray that you are as well. It's good to see each and every one of you come out, amen, in God's house on a Wednesday night, amen, in the middle of the week. It's always good to see you, amen. Uh, but we got a few things we need to be in prayer about, and also we have a praise report tonight, amen. Uh, Sister Gail got a good report from the doctor, amen. amen. That they, they didn't find nothing, amen. 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 The Lord needs a hand clap of praise for that, amen. You know, because she went in and got some tests done, and they seen something. They seen something, amen. But guess what? When she went back, they said they couldn't find it, amen. <laughs> That's the God we serve. Amen. He's a healing God. He's a delivering God. Amen. He, all, he, he deserves all the glory and all the praise. Amen. I tell you, and, uh, we believe and we look to him. Amen. And God did a work for his child. Amen. amen. And also we need to be remembering Sister Clark tonight. Amen. Uh, Brother uh, Clark says she has a blood clot. They found a blood, uh, another blood clot. So uh, we're going to be believing. Amen. With the same faith that we were believing with Sister Gail. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask God that he'll touch Sister Clark and that blood clot will go away. Amen. Yeah. And we, I believe it can I believe it can happen right when we pray. Amen. Yeah. I believe that. So <laughs> let's pray for that. Amen. Let's also remember uh, James Tootle. Uh, his brother uh, Franklin's uh, his daddy. He's just down and out in his health. And uh, God just we just need God to make a miracle happen and touch his body. Amen. So James Tootle. Amen. Anybody else? So that's Brittany and Evan Weingarner. Okay, let's remember that. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Anybody else? Tommy Shepard. We prayed for him before in his heart. Um, and he got a good report then. But since then, he's kind of went downhill. And he's going to have to have open heart surgery now. We're just kind of waiting on him. Okay, that's Lucas's uncle, Tommy Shepard. Just remember that, amen. Yeah, Scott, I got a fuzzy neck God knows what we have need of, amen, before we even ask, amen, but he wants his children to bring it to the to him, amen, we have not because we ask not, amen, amen. Let's all stand. Tony, Mr. Rowe, let's continue praying for you, if you see. Amen. We've had just um, Delaford's group next now, and uh, Miss Barry continues to pray for different things going on, so just continue to pray for you. Amen. Let's remember that. Amen, Mickey. Amen. God knows every need that we have, uh, have amen, and mm -hmm. everything that we're facing. Uh, he wants us to bring it to him. Amen. Jesus paid a high price at Calvary for us to have life and life more abundantly. Amen. Yes. Amen. amen. I believe that. Amen. Yeah. So let's be a leader in your own prayer tonight. Amen. And let's ask God to touch these needs and the very needs that you're facing right this very hour. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus tonight, God. We just thank you and praise you, God, that we have opportunity to come to you boldly to the throne room of grace because of what Jesus did at that cross. We thank you for the sacrifice of Christ. We thank you for the victory that we have, God. I'm just asking, God, that you touch Morgan Thomas, Lord. We ask you, God, that you touch 
that you'll touch Brother James Tootle, God. We just ask you, Lord, that you'll touch her, touch him, touch his body, God, everything that he's facing and he's going through, God. We just need strength in his body, God. We ask you, God, that you'll touch and heal him in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. As we pray for Sister Clark tonight, God, we ask you, God, that you'll take the blood clot let it just be fade away, God. Let it just be gone, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We pray for complete healing over her body tonight, God. We thank you, God, that you, that you touched Sister Gail, God, that you healed her in the mighty name of Jesus, God. And they could not find nothing, God. God, and we thank you for that, and we give you praise for that tonight, God, and we ask you, God, that you would touch Sister Clark, heal her in the mighty name of Jesus tonight, God, let the doctors find nothing, Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we ask you, God, that you touch uh, Brittany and Evan uh, Weingarner, God, we just ask you, Lord, that you touch their knees, God, and their faces, and they're going through, God, we ask you, Lord, that you move mildly in this family's life, Lord, we ask you, God, that the sacrifice of Christ will be revealed like never before, God, we thank you for the blood of the Lamb, because we're up overcomers by Jesus and what he did at that cross 2,000 years ago today. And Lord, we love you today and we praise you today, God, for the victory that we have. God, we ask you to touch Tommy Shepard, God, everything that he's facing and everything that he's going through, God. We ask you that a miracle take place in, in Tommy's life, God, in the mighty name of Jesus tonight. Don't let it be tomorrow, but let it be tonight, God, that he experienced a miracle in his life. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus over him, Lord. And Lord, we ask you, God, that you touch the unspoken need for Brother Josh, God, as he has at work, God. You know the very need that he's facing and that he's going through, God. I pray that you go before him, God. on the throne. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do in that place, Lord. Touch Brother Joss's mind, God, as he goes through those battles. Just let him know that Jesus has already conquered it, God. We ask you, God, that you touch Chris and the baby that, Lord, that he's fit to bring into this world, God. We just ask you, Lord, that that baby be healthy and whole, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you and praise you, God, that you're going to touch Angela's family. Draw me in, God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus tonight, God. We love you and we praise you and we give you all the glory that you deserve Lord. You deserve it, God. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, God, that you're enlightening the scriptures about Jesus through our hearts. It's not about religion. It's not about tradition. It's not about this church, that church. It's about Jesus. And Father God, we thank you tonight, God, that you're revealing it. We thank you tonight that you're healing, you're delivering, and you're saving. Father God, touch every need. Everyone that we hadn't mentioned here tonight, God, you know every person here. You know every unspoken need. You know everything that we're facing. Father God, go before us. As you would tell the children of Israel numerous times, this battle's not yours, but it's the Lord's. That's right. Father God, we thank you, God, that the battle is won at Calvary. The battle is yours. We thank you that you're going before us tonight, God, and you just telling us to stand still. Help us. And see that salvation. Lord, we ask it, God, that you'll just do that work that only you can do. Help us to stand still, God. Help us to stand still and see your power of your Holy Spirit work through Calvary like never before. Oh, Father, we love you tonight. We praise you tonight, God. We thank you for your presence in this house. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you to touch every need. And the church says amen and amen. Let's worship tonight, amen, as you prepare your hearts to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Let's worship. Happy Wednesday. Is your heart longing for something? Yeah. Amen. Um, you know, I don't watch the news a whole lot because um, I guess in a way I kind of try to shield myself from some of that because, you know, a lot of it's just something's going to make you mad, <laughs> you know, or, or whatever. Um, but every now and then I get a glimpse of things going on and, and then I hear of, you know, different things going on with people we know, um, just how small your circle is, you know, things hit. And, um, you know, praise the Lord that you know, I, I believe all of us, most of us in here, um, are saved and um, you know have, have cried out to to the Lord and surrendered their lives. And um, for those who have, I mean, there's there's just something missing in your life in Christ. And um, I praise the Lord for you know all these trials and things that come before us that um, 
because we're saved, you know, we have we have uh, Christ to go to, and because of that, we also have this longing in our hearts that we don't belong here. Yeah. We don't belong in all this mess. And you know, the, when when you start hearing about you know children getting mistreated in horrible horrible ways, you hear of you know there's just friends you know doing things that they shouldn't do and um, and getting in big trouble for it. And, and you know you just sometimes you're just like you know I'm just a stranger here. I'm I'm I, um, I'm longing for a country. You know. Um, so one day, you know, like our brother Curtis says, maybe the maybe the rapture will take place before we walk out of this building, you know. But um, one day that's going to be where we'll be, Amen. and that's man. There's no no better feeling than knowing that. Amen. that 
the Lord, one of the reasons the Lord is showing us how to live for God. It's because of those little ones that just went in the back. Amen. 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 To train them up in the way that they should go. Amen. We have to ask ourselves. Amen. Examine ourselves. Lord, help me. Amen. Amen. Preaching to myself. Amen. Lord, help me. Amen. If we really knew how important it was to teach our children about the sacrifice of Christ. Amen. Why not? But before we start here, and we're going to be in Isaiah 53, but before we start with this sermon tonight, I want you to know also, if you hadn't already, to go to YouTube, Victory Broadcasting, and subscribe, and you can listen to it. I know Brother Clint's been getting a bunch of it in his big truck this week, amen, he's been telling me all about it, and uh, it, it's good, amen, you get some cross preaching. Is there an app that you can get, or, or it's just... It's just YouTube. Yep, you don't have to have your internet be your pay. <laughs> That's all you have to have is your internet, amen? And then you get your YouTube. Just go to YouTube and subscribe. And, uh, but uh, it's Victory Broadcasting. It has several different cross ministers on there, amen? And I wouldn't be telling you to go look at something, amen, if they wasn't telling and preaching the truth, amen? Amen. We need some determined cross-eyed preaching today. Amen. We need some determined cross-eyed preaching in this last day. Once you taste it, just a little bit won't do. <laughs> Amen. I want more. Amen. So if you have your Bible, Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. The title of this message is The Testimony of God. The Testimony of God. Isaiah 53. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just love you and we praise you tonight, God. We thank you, God, for the healing virtue, God, that you're going to touch each and every person we prayed for at the beginning of this service. Father, we thank you because we have faith in your Son. That's the reason why. We thank you, God, because you're going to touch each and every individual sitting under the sound of my voice because your word is alive. And Father, we just ask you, God, in the next few moments that you would touch each and every heart, each and every mind to receive your word. Anoint me to preach and teach your word, God. We ask it all in Jesus' mighty name and the church says, Amen and Amen. The testimony of God, Isaiah 53, and it would go like this. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? You can stop right there and preach all night. He says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. And he has no form of comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Wow. I'm going to preach to myself tonight. Amen. Whenever he says, who has believed our report, number, number one, we're going to have to believe the report of God. We got to believe. He give us that. The, the avenue is faith. Faith is believing. He says who? That who is, are we going to believe the report of the Lord? He says whom his arm of the Lord is revealed. Can I tell you the arm of the Lord is his strength? Yeah. His power? But until we believe what Isaiah the prophet here is fitting to lay out in the scripture, until we believe God's report, we cannot have the arm of God. Get this, and he says, For he, meaning Jesus, shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. Can I tell you, this is the dry ground. We are that dry ground, amen, this, this sin wilderness, amen, that we're born into. But Jesus said he came out of dry ground. Can you grow anything in dry ground? No, but the Lord came from dry ground, amen. He says he's just like a tender plant come from dry ground. Because I'm going to tell you something. Whenever he says, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground, that's the root that we got to be connected to. I need to be connected to that root because I'm dry and dead within myself. Amen. 
Can I tell you, there was no hope within Scotty. There was no hope within me because I was dry and dead and you are dry and dead without the Lord, without that tender plant who is Jesus Christ. We got to be connected to that root. But we got to believe the report of the Lord. If he says right here, he says, get this. And this, this right here hits me between the eyes. He says he has no form of comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. Can I tell you that there's a news flash that means there's something wrong with me. If I won't even desire him, there's something wrong with me. That's the reason why he came to bleed and die. That's the reason why he came out of the dry, that considering the dry ground, considering why he came to bring life when there was no life, to bring hope when there was no hope, to bring victory when there was no victory. Jesus Christ is that tender plant. Jesus Christ is the arm of the Lord. But who will believe our report. Amen? Whenever he says who will believe our report, I don't just see Isaiah here writing this through the power of the Holy Spirit. I see God himself saying, me and Jesus, who's going to believe our report? Can I tell you, God came and reconciled sinners Himself, He came and walked as a man. It was God in the flesh. Can I tell you, who's going to be believe His report? God's got a way of us living and he's trying to show us right here if the prophet Isaiah had a view of it and it was all about Jesus Christ and him crucified, you better believe we better get a hold of it in this last day. Who's going to believe their report? He says that we should desire him. He says there's no beauty that we should desire him. That it, there's something within me that I, and, and I don't want to desire him. Amen. There's called a sin nature that we're born with. Amen. But when he came as a man, see, that sin nature, the flesh, it wants something that's going to appease them. Right. When Jesus came and he bled and he died, the, the way that he did, it was a stumbling block to many, and it still is today. And it's a stumbling block to me. I'm going to preach to myself tonight, amen? It's easy for us to say it's a stumbling block to those, and it's a stumbling block to those, but it's a stumbling block to me because I'm not wanting to die to what God's showing me. I came for you, Brother Scotty. I came to die for you that you might experience life. Amen? Amen? amen. Verse 3 it says, And he is despised and rejected of men, and a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it was our faces from him. <laughs> he was despised and we esteemed him not. When we read this, we, we, we don't want to look at ourselves as that's who we was. We automatically, the sin nature, the, the fallen flesh, the, what did it do? It automatically think of somebody else. Well, they rejected him. Well, they don't want him. What about, well, me? What about me not wanting him tonight? Amen. What about me being real with myself, saying, God, I don't want to grow. I don't want to change. I don't want to. We have to be real with ourselves for true change to take place. Jesus came for one reason. He didn't just come to give us a good colorful story that we can read every Sunday and every Wednesday and think that that's okay. He wants us to live by what he came for. To give us life. Yeah. There's life in the sacrifice. Amen. But we got to die. That we might live. Amen. Right. So he says right here. And he says that we esteem him not. He says surely he has bore, borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he did it anyway. He died anyway. Amen. He died anyway. Yeah. While we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Yes, See, it's so easy to get saved, get the message of the cross, and think that, well, you're just walking on clouds now. Amen? Are we going to believe the report of the Lord? I need it more today than I did yesterday. Amen. And that's the sacrifice. 
This is what the prophet Isaiah is, is, is writing here now about the sacrifice of Christ, the reason why he was coming. We was the problem. You see this all in the, in the scriptures here. They didn't want him. They rejected him. That's me. Yeah. And then he says, he says, what did he, he bore our griefs, even rejecting him. Then it says, but he was wounded. That's already happened. Amen. Can I tell you tonight? You don't have to wait on your victory. God's waiting on you. Can I tell you tonight where you say, well, maybe God will deliver me tonight. Well, Jesus is already, it says right here, but he was wounded. He's undid the work. But see, the problem is, is unbelief in my heart because of who I am. The, the very man that he was saved here, that did not want him. But if we have believed the report of the Lord and what the prophet Isaiah is saying here, we can walk out with victory. Amen. 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 He wants us to, this to have victory in our hearts in the spiritual man. Amen. To live by this. What did he say? But he was wounded for our transgression. He was. He was bruised for our iniquities. Amen? He was. It's not he's going to. Amen? See, this has got to settle in. See, you're here tonight, but you might learn tomorrow. You might hear the word of God tonight, and guess what? You might learn tomorrow. Me and Brother Clint was talking today. The very thing that how God was showing him and me on what we was learning today through the grace of God, most people would have condemned us, hit us in the head with a rock, and said, oh, man, you just done did some big piece of stupid, and God just, he just don't like that. No, his faith was right, my faith was right, and something happened, and guess what? It showed that the issue was within You don't get saved and all of a sudden we know and on the back of the pew, we like to call that like something that, like that's holy, but <laughs> like everything's okay, you're saved, man, you you good. Can I tell you? Until you realize the problem's within and it continues to stay there, and whenever you do mess up, you do do something wrong, but you feel bad about it, it was because of your faith was right, is the reason why you can even know that it was wrong. Amen. Wow. So guess what? He's wanting grace to come in to lead God and direct to show us that where we can walk in victory over that thing that was besetting us. But guess what? What he's going to show you? The man and the woman in the mirror. Because when I do something wrong, I sin, I fall short, I do this. Guess what? It ain't the neighbor next to me. It ain't the person over here that, that made me do something crazy. It was the one that did the act of sin. It was stemming from within. So he was wounded for our transgressions. Ours, not his. Ours. He was bruised for our iniquities. Every wrong that I've ever done, he was bruised for it. Amen? Yeah. The chastisement of our peace. Peace. I need God's peace today. Yeah. I don't know about you, it's getting darker out there, but Jesus is wanting to shine his light more, but he only can do it through the avenue of peace. And where peace come from is through his death at Calvary. He says, and his peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Amen? Do we believe that? I believe it's more spiritual than it is physical. Thank God for the physical. Thank God, Sister Gail, amen, ain't got, she's got a report of the Lord today, amen, that she's not carrying that sickness. That's something to shout about. But can I tell you, for every one of you sitting in here tonight that's washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, you are healed. Amen. You are delivered. You are set free. But we got to believe the report of the Lord. The devil wants to tell you it's over. It's not no hope. Look at what you did. But can I tell you, look back to Calvary. Look back to what the report of the Lord is. The arm of God. Amen. That's his strength. Is his son. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit wants to bring forth the power of Calvary in mine and your life tonight. See, don't get weary when you get out there and you keep your faith looking to what Jesus did at the cross and you do something wrong. Can I tell you this? 
Condemnation will come in if you're trying to do something. But when we keep looking to Calvary and say, Lord, hallelujah, I don't want this. Lord, change this heart that's within me. I don't want to keep doing the things that I'm doing. Guess what the Spirit of Grace will say? That's why I'm pointing you to Jesus. That's why he said, by what? He says it right here. He was wounded for our transgression. Amen. The Holy Spirit of truth guides you into that only truth, which is Jesus. And the only way truth can be applied to me is the door of Calvary. Get this, verse 6. All we. Everybody say all. All. All we like sheep have gone astray. That'll preach. Yeah. Amen. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Laid on him. Laid on him. Can I tell you there's no guilt, no shame in Christ? Amen. There's peace that passes all understanding. That whatever our little bitty brains can even comprehend. But we have gone astray. That's why he came. Amen? Because of sin. He's a sin offering. Amen? He's a life giver. Yeah. There's life in the blood. Amen. There's life in the blood. Amen? When we start getting a hold of it and say, I'm determined to know nothing else. I'm going to keep looking that there's life in the blood of Christ. That, that what he did, the victory that he won through his death. And I'm going to keep looking at that and nothing else. I'm not going to listen to any preacher unless they preach it. Christ and him crucified. Because I want God to get all the glory that he deserves. It needs to be conviction on the child of God's heart that Jesus is not getting the glory. There's something wrong. When it's something that I'm getting the glory for. That's right. When the Apostle Paul said there's no good thing in me. That's, right. That's why we got to be in Him. Amen. It ain't Christ in me. It's me in Christ. See, we want to reverse it. Christ get in me. And now we're going gonna, gonna, to gonna go around and say a little bit of Jesus. Talk a little bit about the cross. No, it's me in Christ. Amen. That I might live. The only way you can be in him is to be in his death. Reckon ourselves dead. Amen. Where do we do that? Look to Calvary. Hallelujah. Don't let nobody tell you no different. I'm telling you church, it's time to get narrow than we've ever been in our lives. It's time right now. I believe if God himself was sitting in here in the flesh, we would be doing something a little different. We say, yeah, I'm going to take a little serious. Nah, he's in here. Well, he's here. He's here. He's here. Can I tell you the reason why? Because of his son. He gave us the doorway for his son, the Holy Spirit, to be here. Amen? Glory be to God. That's shouting material. Amen? So we see right here, we have all gone astray. Amen? But he laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb. The sacrifice of Christ. Amen. He was brought as a lamb. To the slaughter. Hmm. Amen. And as a sheep before the shears is done. So he opened not. His mouth. Hallelujah. He was. Can I tell you this? When a child of God is deceived to the point where they think that they can just receive the sacrifice of Christ once in their life, something's wrong. I don't just receive Christ when I got saved. See, the problem with the preachers today, and we got to re let the Holy Spirit relearn and reteach us the Bible. Amen. That needs to be shouted on the roof. Yeah. We put too much confidence in man. Can I tell you, everything that's preached from behind this pulpit, pulpit, it's up to you to go home and look and search if it's of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. So we see right here, he was led. He was led to the slaughter. He was led to the cross for me. 
but I didn't deserve it. Amen. I still don't deserve it. Right. Saved, washed in the blood, I don't deserve it. Right. Amen? Amen? But he did. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this right here is the grounds that God will illuminate more to you? You cannot get the illumination of, see, I used to think for the longest, I would say, well, God's going to give me more when I read more, pray more, fast more, do more. God gives you more when you believe right. Your faith has to be in the right object. It's right here in Isaiah 53. The lamb before the slaughter, the lamb at the cross, the one that took away my sin, amen? The one that took away your sin and died for it. See, your faith has to be in him and what he's done, the sacrifice of Christ. It can't just be in the name of Jesus. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. See, that right there trip us up because of the things that we've been taught. It's supposed to be in the sacrifice of Christ. That's the person and the work of Christ. That's the Lamb of God. Right. When those sinners in the Old Testament, when they had their rope around the neck, we, I say it all the time. When they was there at the, at the temple, at the tabernacle, guess what? Their faith was in that shed blood of that sacrifice. Right. That priest examined the sacrifice, not the sinner. He, but he was there for one reason only, for that sacrifice to cover him, for him to experience life. Amen? His faith was in the lamb being slain. It's no different today. And if it's not, it's misplaced faith. That God cannot honor. Amen. So we see right here in verse 8. He was taken from prison. And from judgment. And who shall declare his generation. For he was cut off. Out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people. He was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death. Because he has done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Get verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you shall make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. When he says right here, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Can I tell you, child of God, tonight? You cannot please God outside of faith in the sacrifice of Christ. I'm going to say it again. We cannot please the Father unless our faith is in what pleased Him. Right. Amen. Yes. I'm going to preach the Bible tonight. Amen. amen. The Bible says it pleased God. Amen. The Father. Amen. It pleased the Lord to bruise His Son. That's at Calvary's heel. His sufferings. His death. The sacrifice. The pouring out of His blood. His life freely given for me when I did not deserve it. Can I tell you? It pleased God. And if it pleased the Father, guess what we got to do? We're going to have to put our faith in His Son and what His Son did at the cross to please Him. It's not the cross and. Amen. See, that takes some time to learn. But God's teaching us. Amen. Well, if God teaches you something new tonight in the scriptures, don't get afraid and get scared and run away. Just allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and illuminate the scriptures of His Son and what His Son did. Amen. Because guess what? If this is what pleases the Father, it evaluates what we do. Amen? It checks my motive by what I'm doing. Because see, a lot of times in my past, I would say I was pleasing the Father by what I was doing. But my faith was not in the sacrifice. Amen? Now trust me, I believe when your faith's right, you'll be doing. But listen, scratch that. 
We like to do that because that's a part of the nature in us because we're trying to opt out of something. Can I tell you? It's simply this. Believe in the sacrifice. Believe in the sacrifice. Why can that be enough? I didn't say you didn't have to go out here and do nothing, but why can't we just wrap our minds around and say this? It pleased the Father what His Son did. So if my faith is just in the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the work that He did, guess what? The Father's pleased with you. Maybe your neighbor on your same road has read 20 chapters this week, but you had not even opened the Bible. Well, guess what? If your faith is in the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world, He still is pleased with you. But guess what? If you keep your faith there, it will produce you to want to go read. Have you ever? I'm going to preach to myself. I've had seasons where I didn't want to read. Oh, Pastor Scott, you pastor in the church, you got a flock. Yeah, yes, amen. Amen. Yes, it happens more than what I want to admit. But I need him. I need him. That right there should tell me I need my faith to be anchored in the only place that pleases him. And when your faith is pleasing him, the Holy Spirit is working on your behalf. I believe you have joy unspeakable. Amen. I believe he'll be guiding and directing you like you have never seen as a Christian. Amen. It also bring about so much opposition in your life. But glory to his name. But glory to his name. Let it be opposition. Let them all say all men are evil against you in Dublin, Georgia. Amen. What did, what did Jesus say? A prophet's not even welcome in his own country. Amen. I'm not saying none of us are prophets in here. Amen. But what I am saying, if you're a carrier of this gospel, you're not going to be like. He was rejected. But guess what? When one gets it, hallelujah, it's enough to shout home the glory. Amen? Amen. 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 I wouldn't change my path for nothing that I've been down. Amen. Amen. Amen? Because it's taught me some things that I needed to learn, and I'm hard-headed. It takes me a lot longer sometimes. Amen? But we see right here that what? It pleased him. Amen? It pleased God. Flip with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 2. It pleased the Father that His Son was to sacrifice the Lamb of God. If we ever have to put a but on the end of, well, Jesus Christ and Him crucified is the answer, but. They should never be that on the end of Christ crucified. Amen. This is so elementary. Amen. It is. It's kindergarten. But guess what? He don't want you graduating from that. Amen. We need a bunch of kindergarten students in the house. Amen. Because see what happened is when we graduate from one to another, we think that we're better than that and we can move on. You work from the foundation of the cross. Amen. You live from the foundation of the cross. And when I say that you live from the foundation of the cross, that means the sacrifice, the work of Jesus. The blood, the atonement. Amen? The whole Bible is about it. The Bible says in John 5, 39, the scriptures are about him. What are you going to do with that? Amen? Maybe Facebook's watching somebody just tuning in tonight for the first time. What are you going to do with John 5 and 39? Amen? What are you going to do with it whenever he says the scriptures are about him? Because this is our Jesus book. Amen. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 beginning in verse 1. And I brethren, this is the apostle Paul, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. Thank God because I don't have that. Amen. <laughs> I can preach the smartest that I know how and it still ain't excellent. Amen. Come on somebody. He says, I didn't come to you with all that, amen? I didn't come to you with trying to dress up the gospel. I didn't come to you trying to pervert the gospel, add to the gospel, add to what Isaiah was saying in 53. I didn't come to you saying that there's more to the blood. I didn't come to you saying, well, the sacrifice and that book that's down there at the olive branch. We like to say New York Times bestseller. We just say olive branch, amen? That's the closest one we got, amen? They don't have no good material in there. 
Amen, Brother Scott. Amen. We move on. Huh? Amen. I bought a shirt or two from there. Amen. It says that when he came, he didn't come with that excellency of speech. Amen. He didn't come with watering down the gospel. He didn't come with adding to the gospel. He says, but this. Amen. Guess what? He says what? Declaring unto you the testimony of God. It pleased the Lord to bruise his son. Not that he wanted to see his son suffer, but it pleased him that now that we could have an avenue back to the Father. Amen. How many of you know we've been engrafted into the family? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right. Amen. I've been, I've been adopted, amen. I've been engrafted into the family. Everything that Jesus has is mine. Yeah, that's right. But the Bible says the prosperity of the Lord is in his hand. you got to be in him to be able to prosper. And the only way you can be in him is to be dead. There's a lot of blab it and grab it and all these preachers, Joyce Myers and all these other ones, Kenneth Copeland, Joseph Prince, Shut them off. Because guess what? They're telling you how to go prosper and you don't have a sin nature. See, we need to listen to the ones that are saying, listen, it's about the Lamb of God that took away the sin. And listen, we got to live by that. When the Apostle Paul would sit here and say, if it was something to move on from, why would he say this? Why would he say, I come to you declaring? Can I tell you? He was declaring with everything in him. That if it was his last message that he preached, it was Christ and him crucified. Yeah. Yeah. It's not popular. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Because if the world and the church knew the message of Christ and him crucified, this house would be packed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But can I tell you this? Don't stop because it's not. Don't give up because it's not. Don't say, well, they might be something wrong. Well, it might search the scriptures. He says, you search the scriptures and you think you find eternal life. But they are they which testify of me. It brings us back to the land. So if the Apostle Paul said the testimony of God, what is our testimony? For the longest, my testimony was drugs, alcohol, deliverance over this, that, and the other. Well, guess what? Thank God that he did deliver me from that because it could have took me out. But can I tell you what my testimony is tonight? It's Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's the one that died for me when I do not deserve it. He's the one that's working for me right now because I still don't deserve it. But my faith is in the avenue where God can be pleased with me and the Holy Spirit of truth can keep guiding me in that truth. Amen. We need God's grace. That's God at work. I need His grace today. And you can feel His grace working. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Have you ever felt His grace? If you had not felt His grace working, can I tell you? Step into the Lamb. Step into the cross. Step into that life of, of living. Amen. Step into it. It's the testimony of God. It's God's testimony. Do we really, do we even hear those words? It's God Almighty. Jehovah Jireh. Can I tell you, He's the one that we're trying to get to. Amen. Mm, hallelujah. He's the one that we're trying to get to in heaven. And he gave us a way to get to him and allow access of his grace and his spirit to work and function like it should. But it's a one avenue. It's through his son. But you got to get to a place where you say, what? I am what? Declaring the testimony of God. Amen. We're fitting to get into what that is in the scripture. Amen. We already have, but we're going to see what he says right here. He says, for I... Let's slow down in this verse because we love to scoot on through it. Cross preachers does because I'm telling you something, I believe every cross preacher that gets to understand of the cross has this verse somewhere. I know it's highlighted in the Bible. Amen? Romans 6 was probably the whole chapter is highlighted. Amen? I know mine is. <laughs> Praise God. But whenever he says what for I, it's personal. It falls back to me in the land. Amen? It falls back to me and God. Well, I got to realize it's not about my spouse. Amen? Right. It's 
not about my wife, me trying to well this, that, that. It's not about your cousin, your aunt, your uncle. It's about you realizing, for I, you got to get to that place. I got to get to that place. Can I tell you how do you do that? Just believe the report of the Lord. The report of the Lord is this. This is his testimony. His son has came. His son has died. His son has lived again. Amen. So he came declaring this testimony. He says, for I determined not to know anything among you. Wow. So if it's God's testimony, it pleased God to his son to die on the cross to redeem humanity. Amen. To bring us back in relationship with the father. If we believe it don't just happen because he did it. You got to believe what Jesus did at the cross. Not just for your salvation, but your everyday living. And can I tell you this? With your faith there, you won't always feel saved. You won't always feel like the cross is working. You won't always feel like everything's going your way. But can I tell you this? If you would just believe it. If you would just believe it. We'd, see, that's, that's, not, that's facts. Amen? We live by faith, but not facts. Facts is where I don't feel it. But faith says Jesus has already overcome it. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You can frustrate God's grace, amen, if it's not through Calvary. Amen. See, when God is starting to illuminate these scriptures to our hearts, you know what it does? It makes us step back from the Bible and it makes us lay it down and it says, okay, God, what you're showing me is I'm having to relearn my walk I thought I was walking, but I wasn't. Amen? Amen? That's what he had to do with me. And maybe you already getting a hold of it and you're walking. And I believe most of you are. If not, I pray all of us. Amen? But can I tell you, tonight can be tonight. Amen? He didn't say in the scriptures we have to wait tomorrow. He says right now, are you determined? It's to say, you know what? I'm going to believe God's word. We're Bible believers, right? Amen? Right. So if he says right here, he says he came with God's testimony, which is to know nothing else but Jesus Christ and him crucified. He came declaring that. It's one message. It's one message. Amen. For the longest, I would serve the Lord. And I would try to find me in the Bible, something to better me. Amen. And the more I search, the more I realize there's nothing better to find in me is that the problem's within me, and Jesus is the answer. I found Christ. See, when you start looking at the scriptures as it's through Jesus and what he did through the gospel, through the word like Isaiah said, through what he did to redeem us, when you start reading the scriptures through that lens, you'll start seeing the scriptures in the righteous context which is who Jesus is and what he's done. The scriptures will come alive. Amen. You'll read John 3, 16 and get something new out of it every day. That's a verse that the church has just thrown off on the kids. Well, let little Tommy get up here and quote it. Well, do we believe it? Amen. It's so religious and routine-ish, just going through the motions. But the Lord wants it to be real. He wants it to become where I look at this scripture tonight and I say, for I. Am I determined to know anything? When you start becoming determined to know nothing other than Christ and him crucified. For salvation. For our progressive sanctification. Because it's progressive. Amen. We're sanctified in the blood of the Lamb. You can't get no more holier than being in the Lamb. But I realize whenever I look in the mirror, I don't like what I see. I don't like some of the things that I did. Amen. Amen. So we need that ongoing sanctification process to be more Christ-like. But this only comes through the avenue, avenue of being determined to know nothing else but Christ and Him crucified. Amen. So we see right here the Apostle Paul said this is the testimony of God. Amen. Flip with me to Romans. I'm not going to hold you much longer. We've got a few minutes. Amen.
Romans chapter 7. We're going to start with verse 9. This kind of just jumped out to me, and I just want to just bring this out because Romans 7, verse 9, it says, this is the Apostle Paul speaking of himself. He says, For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. When he says, For I was alive without the law once, that was salvation. Can I tell you when the Apostle Paul said right here in the scriptures, For I was alive without the law once. I was alive without any works that I had to do or anything that I had to try to get to get victory. I was alive. Amen? Can I tell you the only place that we can be considered alive is in Christ. See, that I might die, that Christ might live. It's his resurrection. It's his life. I got to be in him for God to see me alive. Amen. See, if I'm not in Christ, if I'm not still walking in the avenue to where I was saved, like the Apostle Paul said here, for I was one, was alive without the law once. That was salvation. He said, I was alive without the efforts of the law. But now, now that I'm saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, I'm looking through my own strength. And guess what? Sin revived and I died. When he said right here that I stepped out of the avenue that Isaiah said in Isaiah 53 and the apostle Paul was saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says what? I, I began, began to start learning that I got to be determined to know nothing else but Christ and him crucified. I got to continue to look to what Jesus did at the cross that I might be alive. Because if it's not in Christ, God sees you and me as dead. The church in, Revel in, in Revelation chapter 3, you know what he says? He says, you look alive, but I call you dead. See, that's a church that quit walking in the way that he was saved. Quit walking in the way that he said, you know what? It's not by my strength, my will, but it's by Christ's work, his sacrifice, and what he did at the cross. That's the church that God will see alive. It's not the, all the good and glorious things that you see. I want to tell you what you'll see in a cross-preaching church. You'll see a bunch of jacked-up people. Amen. Hello. And I'm not saying that in a way that's trying to come against you. I'm saying that in a way we'll be real. Because if we'll realize, he said he'd come for what? For the sick, not the whole. All of us are sick. But see, the ones that think that they don't need him no more, guess what? He sees them as dead because they're trying to earn it. They're trying to work for it. But see, God, guess what? We got to go in the avenue that Isaiah said that we got to look to where he died for us. The arm of the Lord. That's God being alive. That's God working. His strength, not mine. I'm weak, but he's strong. And he's only strong whenever I'm weak. That means that I can't God and Jesus be it. Yes, and when I look to that, the arm of the Lord is my strength. That means the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe with everything in me, is working through the avenue of his son. Amen. Can I tell you, he says, for I was alive without the law once. I was alive. I was redeemed by no efforts or works that I did. Right. What did you do to get saved? Believe. You believe that you was a sinner. You believe Jesus died for you. And that's all you really needed to know. You cried out, Lord, help, save me. Amen. Maybe you was there and never uttered a word. Maybe you got led through the sinner's prayer. Maybe whatever, however it happened, you believe the report of the Lord. You believe what Jesus did at the cross. That's how you were saved. Guess what? You didn't do nothing to earn it or deserve it. You was alive without the law right then. You was alive without any effects of it. You was alive without you having to do nothing. Why is it that we get in our own minds, I believe it's the fall of, the, of man, the sin nature, it deceives us to thinking that now we got to go do it our own way. Amen? We got to go do it my own way. I got to do it this way. And then we'll put faith in man that's been led away. Some wind of doctrine has come, perverted them in the gospel. And now, well, they love God. They might love God, but guess what? If God is showing you, get from among them. It's time to get back in the way that God works. Where you was alive. Where was you alive? When you was found in Christ. He wants us to walk right there. Amen. 
We're going to jump back to verse 4. He says, Wherefore, my brethren, you also, also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. That you should not be married to another. Even to him who is raised from the dead. That we should bring forth fruit unto God. Oh hallelujah. Can I tell you the only way that we can be what? We can be dead. That we might live is by the body of Christ. Amen. He says wherefore my brethren you also become dead to the law. That means the law ain't, it's not bad. It's that I'm not going to look to its effects. I'm not going to look to the law for my strength. To find victory. My strength to find life. Amen. I'm going to look to the body of Christ. That's the sacrifice. That's his blood. That's his atonement. That he did. And get this. Unless it's through the cross of Jesus Christ. You cannot bring fruit unto God. We're going to preach it again. Unless it's through the sacrifice of Christ. It cannot be fruit unto God. It says it right here in the scripture. He says that you should be married to another. If we look to anything other than what Christ did at the cross, that means we're being married to another. We got to be married to Christ. Amen? He says what? That what? And what's he say? Even to him who is raised from the dead. That means the sacrifice was accepted. It was paid for. Amen? That we should bring forth fruit unto God. Why is it that the Pentecostals, and I like to say the Pentecostals because I'm Pentecostal, amen? I know where I came from, but why is it that the Pentecostals claim fruit to God is what we do? We claim walking in the Spirit is speaking in tongues for 30 minutes or doing this courageous act and calling it the Spirit of God that moved on them to do it, not saying none of it wasn't God, amen? But that's gifts of the Spirit, Amen? But he says fruit unto God. How do we do that? By the sacrifice of Christ. My faith being in that alone. Now the Holy Spirit can bring forth fruit. Look at Cain and Abel. When Cain brought up the fruit to God. Guess what? He wasn't pleased with it. Because it was the works of his hands. It was law. Amen. But when Abel came up with a bloody sacrifice. A lamb. Because he knew the order that God said. And looking at me and you looking at it. It looked like it wasn't pleasing. Amen. It looked horrible. But it pleased the Father. It's no different today. Where was you alive once? At Calvary. Where are you going to remain alive? At Calvary. Can I tell you that's all you need to do and believe? And the Holy Spirit will teach you everything that you need to know about this word. Can I tell you he's a teacher? He says you need no other teacher but the Holy Spirit. But see, when your faith is right, and it's in the avenue that pleased the Father, the avenue that, that, that God can only work, amen, where you was alive, I need to be alive, amen? amen, because it's not I that lives, but it's Christ, hallelujah, hallelujah, let's all stand tonight, amen. You know, the arm of the Lord is God at work and not us, Amen. The arm of the Lord is God at work and not us. It's the Lord's work on Calvary. He wants to bring forth that in our life. Amen. But you got to realize you got to reckon yourself dead. How do I do that? By the body of Christ. This is the every second, every minute kind of gospel. This is not a gospel, well, I just wasn't that bad today, Brother Scotty. When we start thinking like that, Amen? I've been there. Yeah. I've done it. Got a t-shirt, signed up for it. Amen? But look here, take my name off of it. I don't want that no more. Amen? Right. Reckon me to be dead. How do I do that? That, I'm, that I might be alive unto God. Right. It's through the body of Christ. Amen. Can I tell you, child of God, where you was made alive, when you accepted Jesus when he did that cross, you was made alive by nothing you did. Can I tell you how you remain alive? Is keep looking to the sacrifice of Christ that got you in. And it will produce everything that needs to be produced in your life. I don't have to stand up here tonight and tell you to go do this. Right. 
go do that. I don't have to stand up here tonight and tell you, well, you need to go help that little old lady down the road. Can I tell you, when your faith is in the sacrifice of Christ, the Holy Spirit will teach you, lead you, and guide you into everything that you need to do. Amen. Amen. I believe that with everything in me. Because the more I get out of the way, the more that I reckon I'll be dead that he might live. He can teach me. But when I'm in the way, he cannot teach me. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. We praise you tonight, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the illumination of your word of Jesus Christ and him crucified. We thank you for the sacrifice of Christ in this house tonight, God. We thank you, God, that you're revealing that to our hearts more and more. God, help us to get rid of all the old and all the, the old religious things that we have learned that's not of you, God. Help those things to be counted as done that we can look to the cross of Jesus and we can bring fruit unto you, God. We want you to have fruit, God, that's pleasing in your sight. Father God, help us to bring that fruit unto you. Help us to remain in the faith. Help us to fight that good fight of faith. I pray for the individual that feels like they're, they're going to quit and give up. I pray, God, that they'll just believe in the sacrifice once again. Father, maybe there's somebody here that's battling something. Maybe they just don't know how to get victory over it. Maybe whatever it, it might be. I pray that they'll look to Calvary and just reckon themselves to be dead under the deed unto that sin. And to realize Jesus paid for it. Father God, as we get ready for the altar service, Lord, you know the need. You know what we're facing. You know what we're going through. You know every person that's watching on the internet, the ones that might tune in later on down the road. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the power of God. And I know that your word is going out and it's touching the very hearts and lives of each and every one that's sitting here, including myself. Father God, help us to live like it's the last day. Help us to look to you and what your son did on that cross. God, I ask it all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. As you play something tonight, whatever you have need of tonight, I want to pray with you. Amen. God wants to love on you tonight. He wants to bring forth Calvary, the victory of Calvary in your life. Amen. Amen. So I want you to come down to this front. Whatever it is you have need of, amen, as you play something, I want you to come pray. Amen. We'll believe together. Amen.
Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. He is my healer. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Do you believe the report of the Lord tonight? Amen. Yeah. I believe God is opening up the scriptures like we never seen before. Amen. I believe He's illuminating on the kids. They can come on in if they want to. Amen. Anytime those kids, Amen. Y'all make sure y'all tell them. Anytime those kids want to come in here, Hallelujah. Let them come in here. Amen. Let them get some of this good gospel. Amen. You never know when a child about here might want to hit the altar. Amen. Amen. So any of you teachers, amen, ever want the kids to bring them in here for during altar service, bring them on in. Amen. Amen. Because they need to see that. They need to experience that. Amen. They need to see God doing what he does. Amen. Amen. As all hearts and minds clear tonight. Amen. I want to say once again, I'm so grateful and thankful for each and every one of y'all. Don't say it enough. Don't tell y'all enough. And we're, we're just out of this world. Just so grateful for the body that we have here at Crossway Fellowship. In the body that's to come, amen. That's right. And I want to tell you something. God's he, He's leading God and directing us on a, on a message on about the body and how the gifts of the Spirit and how all that stuff works. He's He's putting some stuff together, but I want to tell you, you you're for a purpose here, amen. That's right. amen. God's got you for a reason, amen. He's got you here, amen. You might say, well, my position and what I do is just nobody sees it. It's just nothing. God don't even see it. I want to tell you something. The foot's just as important as the head. That's right. Amen. The foot is just important as the hand. Amen. Amen. When one's lacking on the body, it, it hurts the whole body. Right. Amen. So I want you to know each and every one of y'all means so much to this body here. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Brother Barry if he'll dismiss us in a word of prayer tonight. Amen. So we'll come back Sunday morning. Amen. Bring somebody with you. And uh, hopefully we have some news we're going to be able to break to y'all coming up. Amen. Uh, but I ain't going to break it right now, but we'll leave y'all in a little suspense. Amen. But uh, I'm going to let Brother Barry give us a word of prayer. Can I say something real quick? I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, go ahead. I'm Jasmine McKinney. She really wants to come. There's nothing she can. And she's, I'm having to pick up extra shifts and stuff like that. So let's just be praying about that. Because she's hungry for this truth. She's hearing Amen. this truth. And she's growing. So I'm Amen. excited for her. Brother Clint's been here. We've been praying about that, too. Amen. Amen. He went and laid a law down in there. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I'm gonna say, no, uh, brother. Uh, I met Sister Cindy. She, uh, she did the same thing. Amen. We prayed and we believed on her behalf. Amen. Yeah. That she could start being here on Sundays, right. and it was her heart to be here. Amen. And amen. God made a way. Amen. Amen. God made a way. She's amen. here, and I'll tell you something. God sees that. Amen. Right. He sees that. So yeah, I believe He's gonna do it for her too. Yes. Amen. We pray and believe. Amen. amen. Father, we're so honored to be in your presence, God. We thank you for the bread of life, God. We thank you for all perfect good things come from you, but the perfect sacrifice that you sent to die and hang it up cross and shed your blood so we can have life. 
and have it more because we thought we just can't thank you enough. We can't praise you enough. We thank you for 